Buenos Nachos, amigos, and welcome to Record Breakers, a music podcast where a group of friends gather together to share music with each other, an album at a time. It's like a little book club for music. Uh, we're here with a kind of a, but not really officially, but kind of accidental uh, Christmas special episode. <laughs> uh it just fell off of the phone it was the right day for recording. This is a recording just a couple of days before uh, Christmas time. Xmas. Um, we're here. I'm Petey Rave. Your Yuletide yuck uh, something. Uh, and here with me is my team, my squad, my crew, my gang, my, my elves. Uh, we've got David. I'd like to wish our listeners and viewers a happy Saturnalia, and I will celebrate with prolonged eye contact. Exactly. Uh, we've got Drew. Now I'm really sad because I realized it would have been a good bit for me to have some eggnog, and there's some in the fridge, and I didn't get it. Shit, I should have Damn. some eggnog. Um, and fan. last but not least, uh, we've got uh, for his episode, uh, for at least for the last episode for now, in, in the rotating fourth chair, but we'll, he'll be back again at some point in the future. Uh, Matt, I also have eggnog in the fridge, and it's really good and a year old. <laughs> nice. nice. That's safe. Oh yeah, it's like fourteen percent alcohol by volume. Mm. Okay. It's like sourdough starter. I don't know, you just keep it forever. <laughs> Except it's not sour, I assure you. No, uh, you can just you, you use it. You use the last leftover, and you make the next eggnog with it. You know. Mm. <laughs> uh, here to provide the the album this week. It's his turn finally, uh, as is tradition. Uh, Matt, what wh- what have you got for us this week? Uh, I have brought uh, the 2003 album, the Jethro Tull Christmas album. Yes, yes. Um, let's let's talk expectations. Uh, uh, David, what were your expectations coming into this album? Given what I know about Jethro Tull. And keeping in mind that they are a band from a time and of a genre that I am a fan of. They're one of those bands that kind of stays deep in the back of my mind. And then I hear them and I'm always excited. It's always, oh yeah, Jethro Tull. I like Jethro Tull. And given that they did a Christmas album... I was excited and intrigued to hear what this band, led by the incomparable Ian Anderson, would come up with for uh, Christmas. Uh, I like the idea of a Christmas album by a group that I like, because, full disclaimer, I don't really care for most Christmas music. Everybody has their one or two songs that they enjoy, but generally... (laughs) I'd probably rather go out, go without it during the holiday season. The thought of a Jethro Tull Christmas album invokes a much different reaction in me than it would most other people that are irony poisoned in their brains. (laughs) I found this to be incredibly intriguing, and I was down for it with no irony whatsoever. Okay. Uh, Drew, what were your expectations coming into this album? Well, I was really excited because it's getting to that time in the year. It's that time of the season. And you don't get much like heavy metal Christmas music. So I was mm-hmm. I was excited knowing that... Grammy Award winning heavy metal yeah. music at that. Exactly. Exactly. I was excited to hear it. Now, um... Jethro Tull is one of those bands that, like, you hear, like, I've always heard snippets of because I hang out with nerds that play D&D, so. Yep. 
I've always kind of heard it in the I background know. somewhere. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, what's that music playing from the basement of this game store? Oh, it's Jethro Tull. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that makes sense now. Um, but never something I dove into. So it was going to be weird to get, or something I don't dive into much. So it was going to be weird to get Jethro Tall through their eyes looking at Christmas. So I was excited. Yes. And be put in the merry spirit. Yes. Uh, you'll get your Jethro Tall exposure from either your D and D friends or your Ren Fair friends. Chances are they're the same friends though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, there's, there's a Venn diagram and it's almost a circle. Yes, exactly. I'm in neither, strangely enough. Yeah. Uh, they reach out. They, that's the reach. That's their reach. There's that. They, they feel that need, but they have a, a great reach. Um, I, I always, I, 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 I know Jeff Rotol as a reference a lot of the times, uh, and, uh, and, and kind of a joke, but, uh, but I know, I hear snippets of music. I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but I was definitely, uh, excited for this, um, uh, as I spend nowadays, really uh, all day, uh, working, uh, while listening to uh to grocery store PA Christmas music now, oh, I was looking forward to uh, hearing something different uh, Christmas related, um, other than four different versions. I'm gonna say of uh, all I want for Christmas is you. I'm gonna say four different iterations, about three different arrangements of uh uh. Uh, walking into Winter Wonderland, to which I always this sing is in my head. Perfect for my conclusive thoughts later, Petey. Yes. I got you. Uh, walking uh, to which every time somebody, some version, especially the instrumental of walking into walking into Winter Wonderland, uh, comes up, I always sing in my head. Uh, Bob Rivers uh, walking around in window, women's underwear. Um, just at least to keep myself sane. Um. Bob Rivers keeping us sane. Who knew? Uh, yeah, I was intrigued. I was looking forward to checking this out. Uh, but yeah, Matt, how would you describe this album musically? Uh, first, I just wanted to say that I have heard five different versions of uh, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas in a row. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Six Flags Over Texas. I swear someone was listening to my conversation and decided to prank me. I don't know. Uh, but if you, but if you have wanting... Christmas on Christmas Island, yeah. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> I'd, uh, this, this album has been on my to bring list for a while, and it just it never quite lined up until uh, this time that you know it would fit the season at all. Uh, this is the first album that I put on the morning I make eggnog, so it's, <laughs> which is always the day after Thanksgiving. So I get up, drink coffee, <coughs> put on Jethro Tull Christmas album, and start separating eggs. Nice. Um, this this album on this album, uh, there are a bunch of tracks that were previously recorded, uh, you know, dating all the way back to. Uh, around the time of their very first album. Uh, but they were all record re-recorded for, uh, to go on this one. A lot of the lyrics are kind of jaded, uh, which I think is one thing that kind of, I enjoy about the album. Like they're, they're not quite full on John Lennon, happy Christmas level usually. Uh, but there's, there's a, a certain commonality, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, I I feel kindred heart with him on that, and it still it sound it still sounds like Jethro Tull. Um, you know, there's the combination of the the hard rock, uh, Martin Bar smooth guitar solos, and you know mandolin and flute, and mm-hmm. so they still manage to really sound like themselves. Mm-hmm. Um. David, 
how how would you describe this album musically? Uniquely Jethro Tull. As Matt said, it has elements of hard rock while also going into art rock and folk rock. Mandolin, of course, Ian Anderson's flute, the the famous, quote, heavy metal flute, unquote. They're not very metal at all. That's the joke. And the Grammy was also for hard rock, not just metal. Uh, anyway. And musically, it is all of those things that make Jethro Tull uniquely what they are. They're a little harder than 70s Genesis, a little harder than Yes from that time period, but not quite as in your face as Rush was at that time period. Kind of in that space. And these songs are uniquely composed and lyrics are rewritten uh, for the holiday season. But it still has that Jethro Tull vibe of some rock guitars and the occasional out-of-nowhere flute with Ian Anderson's vocals. And yeah, it's... It's a good time if you can get into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Drew, how would you describe the sound musically? Oh, you're oh. muted. <laughs> yep. Yep, I am. Um, so, gosh, now everybody's made the heavy metal flute jokes, and now I have to delete half of my thoughts. Um, no, but... <laughs> It's uniquely Jethro Tull is a good way to put it. Um, Jethro Tull is one of those bands that there's a lot of different genres to define them if you want to be a genre dick. But also, it's it's Jethro Tull. They make cool, folky, jazzy, like well thought out, well composed rock and roll uh, music that has flute in it and sometimes a lute. Um, it's something where... And they toot. In... Yes. They, Made toot, with a toot, fruit. Toot, toot, toot. Um, it's something where I really feel like um, you... The things you get out of Jethro Tull as a band are weird. Um, but they have a way of making these songs, like, super interesting. Like, we'll get into it, but dancey, jazzy versions of old standards is not what I thought I needed out of Jethro Tull. And then a song towards the back half of this album came on. I was like, okay, I can, I can like, super get down with this. It, it is Christmas music for people who like music, like the second part of that phrase less or more than the first part. Um, and I think that's the best way to describe it. It's like, Oh, Hey, a bunch of music nerds made like an album that is putting together old Christmas standards. Plus like some songs they wrote that are vaguely Christmassy mm-hmm. here. And like, yes. that's, I, I think that's cool. <laughs> Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Jethro Tull is cool. Yeah. That... that was Drew that cool. said that, everybody. Not me. Not Squiggles. Drew. Cool. <laughs> uh, cool in its its uncoolness. Uh, and, and fantastic. Cool in its awesomeness. Yes. Uh, no, it, it is... Uh, it is... Very... Like... It's very very skillfully done, very very fun, uh, in in what it does and being the actual Yuletide standards and but with their own original great original songs that hearken those sounds. Um is Jethro Tull's like yeah, like I said, Ren Fair and D and D music, uh, but with hard rock edge. Uh and it's so much fun you kind of like you've got your you've got your, your good like hard rock foundation and then 
of course the flute but the flute is fantastic and the flute really it, it's not a but for those uninitiated it's it's not a it's not just a silly gimmick it, it really like it really sets a great stage for the soundscape of those songs and the melody and 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 it, it is fun to follow along and um you especially if you got headphones on and you got you've got uh you've got uh uh freaking Ian Anderson's uh lips all up in your ear <laughs> like <laughs> hey now uh it is, a, it is a wild experience so you can like there's those moments where you can really feel the like the vibration of his lips like in your head and like all right well there you go then <laughs> he's a here's ian anderson playing flute yeah. Yeah. uh there's also you know you get like in the mandolin fits in there really well and like there's there's a harpsichord part in this <laughs> like if i if i'm correct like there or something similar to that uh in one of the songs and we'll talk about it in the, in the tracks but the the uh that caught my attention it was fantastic and it it is it is all that's been said uh and it, it, it is a fun ride um let's talk about key tracks uh matt what would be some of the key tracks to zero in on uh birthday card at christmas it's the opening track uh it comes in with a nice you know you're immediately greeted with this energetic uh intro with flute and it's like guitar that's partially muted or harmonics or something i don't know uh, and then it comes in with all the electric guitar and good lyrics, and uh, so really nice opening. Um, Jack Frost and the Hooded Crow. This one I always find super cool because the song is in five. Uh, most songs are in four, maybe three. Uh, this song is in five, but the bass drum is kicking every other beat. And so sometimes it's on beat one, three, five, and the next measures it's on two and four and then back one, three, five. And so it offsets every time. And it's something it took me a while to pick up on, but it's something I always was something weird going on with the bass drum. Okay. Thank you, Matt, for clearing that up. There was something going on that I couldn't quite suss out, but it was definitely something. That's what it was. I'm sure. And uh, it goes nicely, you know, the bass drum is doing that through at least the verses. Uh, and then you have this nice, it just nicely going between mandolin and, and the heavier rock instrumentation. Uh, Last Man at the Party. This one, I think, is a really good mix of, it's not the full-on, uh, you know, angry, jaded uh, but it is certainly uh, telling the, describing a certain type uh, who who may not have the, uh, may have had a little too much Christmas cheer. Yeah. <laughs> um, and We Five Kings, uh, it's just a really cool arrangement because yet again, this one is also, they take We Three Kings and then they put it in five time and it works super well. Uh, and a, has a really cool bass line on that one. Ooh. And uh, lastly, uh, Winter Solstice. It's, it's sorry. Uh, it's just uh, you know, it's almost just kind of like a, a tone painting or something. Not quite that far, but it's just an instrumental, nice ending to the album. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, David, what would be some of the key tracks for you? I do want to mention Birthday Card at Christmas because I give it big points for not opening with the typical jingle bells that you hear so much with Christmas music, but it opens right away with Ian Anderson playing the flute. Uh, also, uh, because he wrote this song as a tribute to his daughter who was has a birthday around Christmas time, I personally want to dedicate this track to former AEW TNT champion, the Redeemer, Miro, whose birthday is actually Christmas Day. 
So Christmas is, in fact, Miro Day. Look it up. That's a shoot. Uh, it's also very folk rock and very English, uh, very reminiscent of a band very near and dear to my heart, Big Big Train. And it still manages to put in some pretty good guitars by the end. So that was fun. Uh, track three, A Christmas Song. Uh, it is sort of in the vein of Happy Christmas, War is Over, but not quite as grim as Do They Know It's Christmas. It's sort of in that same headspace. Track four is a, I'm going to say this again, uniquely Jethro Tull rendition of God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. And I will say this to you, PD. This is the song that you could probably get played at work and yeah. no one would be the wiser. Yeah. If I, could, if I had access to whatever the hell the, the system is, I don't know if it's a CD <laughs> player, but I could probably sneak it in. Um, Drew, what would be some of the key tracks for you? Am I unmuted? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You're live, pal. <laughs> hey, I've got a voice. Um, so birthday card for Christmas. One, the story behind it's great. I think that's awesome because I have known some people with birthdays near to Christmas, and it's always sort of weird because it's like, okay, do you give them the because you always have like the centerpiece gift and then the others, right? So do you give them that gift on their birthday or do you give them that gift on Christmas so that they can open a big gift while other people are opening big gift? It's always weird. Um, and it's always awkward. Um, but the song is pretty great. The trills on the flute are great. It's a great story. Um, God rest ye merry gentlemen. Um, this quickly has become my second favorite uh, Christmas themed song besides Oi to the World. Um, <laughs> because, of course, Oi to the World is my favorite one because I'm a giant fucking stereotype. I don't care. Um, and but yet you hadn't heard of Dominic the Christmas Donkey. Feel like what about Gigi the Christmas? Feel like name? we're coming at me for being Italian here. Well. <laughs> it's a kid that, that's racist. Uh, but a jazzy, danceable version of "God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen" is not something I knew I wanted as badly as I did. Um, and then "Green Sleeved" was amazing. Like I don't know what else to say about that. Um, it "Green Sleeves" is a standard, right? Like, it's just a standard, like, a lot of people do their rendition of Green Sleeves. I don't know if I've heard one better than this necessarily. Um, from the tone in the bass guitar specifically, like, it's got this really, like, kind of cool, not hollow, but almost thin tone to it that's kind of cool. Um, I'd be interested to see what equipment they were using on that to get that. Um... And also the piano. The piano on Green Sleeved is phenomenal. It's ridiculously good. Um, and these renditions, I'm always down to hear renditions of things like Green Sleeves. So <laughs> this was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> um, like this yeah, and Birdland, I'm... the two that I'm super, like, I'm always happy to hear a rendition of <laughs> Green yeah. Sleeves or Birdland. So if you've got them, send them. I don't flaunt them. Green Sleeves Birdland Masha. Exactly. Somebody call DJ Z. I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, somebody call DJ Z. Uh, R DJ Z. <laughs> um, yeah, if I were to zero I heard in on... DJ's, you said DJ Z, but I heard DJ M. And I was like, <laughs> he's right here. You, you can just tell him. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I think you guys uh, like keyed in on yeah, birthday card and Christmas is a great like opener uh, uh, thesis a statement of the album like uh, gets you going right away. Um, 
I like that we have a Christmas song and another Christmas song, just conceptually. <laughs> it's like, here's a Christmas song. Here's another Christmas song. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm almost disappointed they didn't have something later on that said yet another Christmas song, but yet hey. another. <laughs> um, God rest ye, merry gentlemen, a nice like rendition of a standard that is, is done in Jethro Tull's way, uh, and is you can, uh, you can really feel it. Uh, especially we five kings, that one in particularly, you can really feel the flute, and you can really like Ian Anderson is right in your ear, going, oh. just vibrating his lips all up in your ear. He's 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 doing what again? yeah okay all, all, all up that. in your ear exactly uh and also like uh bray bray uh bray, is uh, bray uh that one starts off with a nice little like harpsichord-esque thing and it's just fantastic before flying into to to uh more fun stuff um yeah, I think uh, also uh, First Snow in Brooklyn was a, was a fun little track as well uh, that I enjoyed. Um, yeah, let's bring it back around the horn, talk about some conclusive thoughts. Uh, David, what would be your conclusive thought on this album as a whole? Well, be forewarned, uh, this has 16 tracks on it, and it is over an hour. So it's a lot of Jethro Tull. At the same time, it's exactly what I wanted. It, I feel like I got a Christmas gift. So, Matt, thank you. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. What I enjoyed so much about this is that it was Christmas music, but it was still very much Jethro Tull. And it was not the Christmas music I've been hearing over the course of my life, forever. I, I have thankfully managed to avoid Mariah Carey all this holiday season. And mm. that is a miracle in and of itself. It was Jethro Tull, and it just so happened to be that the lyrics revolved around Christmas and the winter holidays, and I ended up enjoying it a lot. If you can enjoy rock music that has a bit of a whimsical feel, I can recommend this. If you are someone like me that is a little tired of the same Christmas music you hear in malls and grocery stores and commercials and everywhere else, and if you think you have a path or you know the guy that handles the Christmas music at whatever function you're attending, this is one to pick up. Mm -hmm. I'm fairly certain that that they... And uh, there exists. I'm fairly certain they play a, C- a CeeLo Green cover of "All I Want for Christmas Is You." Just caught me off out of nowhere. Um, uh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, Drew, what would be your conclusion on this album as a whole? My conclusion is now. I want to hear CeeLo Green's version. Do also you heard though? A... Kind of. I like CeeLo Green. Um. I also heard a smooth, like, jazz rendition of Last Christmas while I was at a restaurant for, like, a work party. Oh, yeah. So I heard a couple of That's why of on Christmas. Twitter I was like, uh, do covers of Wham count for Whamageddon? Because if so, I might have just lost. But no, it was, it was some nice restaurant, and they were playing some smooth cover with, um, like, flutes and stuff. Um, but on the topic of Jethro Tull, um, so Jethro Tull is one of those things that you either know you're probably going to dig it or you have no, I cle- no like clue. I tried to put the word idea and clue together right there. Well, that didn't work out. You for got my no mouth <laughs> um, you either you either know you're probably going to dig it or you don't have a clue who Jethro Tull is. <laughs> like, <laughs> so there's that. But for like music dorks, this is the Christmas album. 
I put it on one day and my girlfriend was like, wait, what the, what the hell is that? (laughs) Um, (laughs) So you're going to get six and one half dozen of the other sometimes. But it's something that I think that like, if you're listening to this podcast at all and doing the at home game, odds are you're going to like this record. If like, that's the type of dives you do in the music you're probably going to enjoy yourself with this one. So, mm-hmm. I um, so. yeah, this is, this is a, this is a good break from the usual Christmas music, but it also is a, just a good, uh, experience, just a good Jeff or toll experience, which is always, which is a, just a good experience. Uh, it is it is fun. It is engaging. It is, I think, weird in really fun ways. Um, it is, uh, you know, it has a lot of like cool layers to it, uh, and it it is really well done. I think everything that everybody's uh kind of like. <laughs> Uh, touch on is right there. Yeah, it's just really skillfully done and well crafted, and and a blast. Um, yeah. Last but not least, Matt, how would you conclude on this album as a whole? Uh, I'm really picky when it comes to Christmas music. There's about seven albums, maybe I like. Um, this is Michael on that Bublé. list. <laughs> this is on that list uh and these not only that but they're all good songs because even of the albums that i like probably 25 percent i'm like i can i don't need to hear this um you know like i said it's this kind of begins my christmas season as far as i'm concerned and uh i'm still happy to hear uh, a lot of the tracks, you know, later in the season when, well, you know, quite often I don't want to hear any more. Yes. Um, and it's not something I can say about many albums either. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Those are our thoughts on the Jeff Roll Toll Christmas album. Uh, now we get to the main event of the evening. Uh, our festive main event, our haiku reviews, where we sum it all up in poetic form. Uh, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Haiku numero, numero uno. David, what is your haiku? Lay it for normies. They will not know that they are infected with tall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh Drew, what is your haiku? Got some thrash in the flute. Some great Christmas arrangements. Holiday metal. <laughs> uh my haiku. Uh some Yuletide flute toots. A fun Soltis soundtrack from Heavy Metal Kings. Uh and last but not least, Matt, what is your haiku? My Christmas staple. Great creative arrangements. Fantastic listen. Go beat that dead horse. Well, just one last time. Uh, <laughs> what we do here. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, those are our thoughts on Je- the Jet Roll 12 Christmas album uh, for your Yuletide festivities uh go forth and enjoy it and be merry uh you can find it on our spotify playlist uh play record breakers the home game do your due diligence and your due diligence there are actually two playlists you can find it on our show notes of every episode uh over at recordbreakerspodcast.com um yeah on that spotify playlist will be I'm not going to say next week's record, because we kind of haven't been able to say next week and next week, but on the next episode's record, uh, and we're going to have, for the next round of episodes, we're going to bring back 
the one, the only, Patty McSwag, a.k.a. Patrick Swagger. Uh, and for the, his first episode, which of course is the first of the cycle, is my uh, album pick. We're going to do an album that uh, from a band that we both stumbled upon uh, while at- attending P. Lander Fest. Uh, we're going to do a Canadian uh, punk band by the name of Pew Pew Pew. Uh, or as uh, P. Landers Yellow would say, Kupu Kupu Kupu, uh, because God bless them. How, how would you say that that name when if, if you look at it? Uh, if you look at it in our playlist, uh, how would you say that name? Uh, but it's Pew Pew Pew, uh, and the album. Uh, Why did they add the K? <laughs> it is like to like do the laser Pew Pew Pew. Um, well, let's see. The album uh, is oh, I had it written down in here somewhere. Uh, it is let me one. There it is. The album is Optimal Lifestyles, the most recent album. Uh, yeah, look forward to that then. But that'll be then, and this is now. Uh, you can, of course, find us all over the internet. Uh, David is at Call Me DJM. Drew is at Extra Super X. Matt is at Emeritic W. I'm at PD Rave. Uh, the, uh, the show is at the four record breakers. That's the number four record breakers. Record breakers podcast.com. Record breakers podcast at gmail.com. Rebelly.net for this and other shows. Rebelly TV on twitch and on youtube you can find uh, all the episodes uh you can watch us live on twitch uh as when we record episodes follow us there know when we go live uh you can also catch up all the other streams including our D streams and right now all the witcher streams and then uh, the mass effect streams and, and all the goodness um but yeah check us out there check out all the vods and the podcast episodes on youtube same name uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, give us good feedback, good comments, all those things. Uh, until next time, hasta los huevos. Midwesterner. Ask Luke fine tag. Um, Drew is, <laughs> is the other Midwesterner. You were supposed to say toodaloo. <laughs> ah, toodaloo. <laughs> I thought you were going to say because it was your life. <laughs> so you just eat your last haul. You will leave your last haul, partner. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>